Yep. Okay, Brendan. Just as a refresher, my name is Tom Fassbender and Mark Weigert. Do you remember us from the last couple times we've talked to you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and from the signs in here, you can see that this is being audio and video recorded again, okay? Mm -hmm. We just have to get some things on the record, um, and you need to tell me if they're true. I was told by your attorney, Mr. Len Kaczynski, that you uh, wanted to talk to us. Is that true? You need to talk because it's being recorded if you could please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was also told that uh, Mr. Kaczynski spoke with you about this. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kaczynski also told us that uh, no promises were made to you on behalf of the state. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Uh, because obviously you're in custody, we're going to go through that Miranda warning again. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. I've got a form here I'm going to use, and I'm going to go through that. If you have any questions, ask me, okay? Yeah. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to consult with a lawyer before questioning and to have a lawyer present with you during questioning. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you at public expense before or during questioning if you so wish. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you have the right to stop the questioning and to remain silent at any time you wish, and the right to ask for and have a lawyer present at any time you wish, including during questioning. Would you like to read those over? Do you understand each of these rights? Yeah. Realizing that you have these rights, are you not willing to answer questions or make a statement? Okay, what I'd like you to do for me is that was, do you understand each of these rights? Initial there, and initial there, that you're willing to make a statement, and then I need your signature there, okay? <clears throat> I heard you're gonna watch a movie last night. What movie did you watch? What was a movie? It was it was wrestling, but I only got to watch 15 minutes of it. How come? Because it ended at nine o'clock, and we got done at 8:45 almost. Oh, okay. Big wrestling fan. Is it all star wrestling? I think there is any more all star wrestling. But oh, whatever they call that. Professional wrestling? Yeah. Okay, I just want to remind you that again this is being recorded and audio recorded and I need you to speak up rather than not if you can. Okay. Okay. And we urge you to, you know, talk to us and tell us, you know, your version again. And what we're, correct me if I'm wrong, what we were told that is you wanted to speak with us um, just to, you know, talk about some clarification of earlier statements, um, some areas where it may have been a little cloudy. Now Mark and I both know probably some of those areas. Uh, we've, we've had obviously an opportunity to look at the evidence and we're familiar with the evidence in the case. And even your last statement, there's some areas that we, we know uh, that you may want to address, and you're probably going to do that because they don't they don't seem to you know necessarily add up. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, because that's why we're here. Again, I'd like to offer you the opportunity now to tell us about some of those things and, and clarify some of those areas for us. We may follow up with some questions. Um, but again, we'd prefer you to just, you know, you know those areas and you know the, the places where you need to uh, finish or clarify. So, again, speak up for us because it is being recorded. And, and go ahead and tell us what, what it was you wanted to tell us. Just 
starting with that day. Certainly. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's something that's important prior to that day, that's fine too. But as it relates to that event. Well, I came home off the bus and then walked home into the house and I played PlayStation 2 until 5 o'clock, called, called my friend and watched TV and then at 6 o'clock I got a phone call from Blaine's boss and I told him that Blaine was trick-or-treating and At 7 o'clock, I got a phone call from Steven to see if I wanted to come over to the bonfire. And I told him I would, and then while I was getting ready, he called again and seen where I was, what was taking me so long. And so I went over there. We went to go pick up some stuff around the yard. And after that, we, he asked me to come in the house because he wanted to show me something. And he showed me that she was laying on the bed. Her hands were rolled down to the bed and her legs were cuffed. And then he told me to have sex with her and so I did because I thought I was not going to get away from him because he was too strong. So I did what he said and then after that he untied her and uncuffed her and then he brought her outside and before he went outside he told me to grab her clothes and her shoes. So I went into the garage and before she went out, when before he took her outside, he t had tied up her hands and feet and went in the garage and he stabbed her. And then he told me to. And after that, he wanted to make sure she was dead or something, so he shot her five times. And while he was doing that, I wasn't looking because I can't watch that stuff. So I was standing by the big door in the garage. And after that, he took her outside and we put her on the fire and We used her clothes to clean up the, some of the blood. And it 
when we put it in the fire and it closed, we were standing right by the garage to wait for it to get down so we threw some of the stuff on it after it went down. And then about nine o'clock my mom came home and she called Steven on his cell phone to tell him that I was supposed to be home at ten o'clock and she asked even if I had a sweater on. So while we waited for the fire to go down, by the time it did get down, it was probably close to 10 o'clock, so he told me to go home. So I did and then got in the house and I talked to my mom for a little bit then went to bed. Anything else? No. What about the truck? Her truck? I never seen it. Never seen it. Was yeah. I ever seen it that day? Okay. Why don't we go back to the beginning a little bit, <coughs> Brendan? Let's just clarify. You get off the bus with your brother. Mm -hmm. and that's Blaine. Yeah. Okay. And you walk home. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's about what time? Three forty-five. And then what do you do when you get home? I go in my room and play PlayStation 2. And where does Blaine go? Goes to the phone. Okay. Is anybody else home at that time? No. Bobby or anybody like that? No. Bobby was, he was bought for hunting. Okay. Well, Brian? He was working. Okay. In previous statements, you had told us that you had left on your bike to go get the mail. Was that true? Mm -hmm. That was a lie? Okay. Did you hear any screaming or anything like you had told us previously? No. Okay, so you get home at 3.45 and you play PlayStation. And you play PlayStation until what time? 5 o'clock. And then what happens at 5 o'clock? Mom gets home, so talk to her for a little bit, then she left with Scott. Okay. And who's home at this time then? Just me and Blaine. Okay. And what do you do after mom leaves? Watch TV until Blaine goes up to the road to uh, get picked up from his friend. Is Bobby home yet? Mm -mm. Okay, so Blaine leaves the house to get picked up to go with a friend. And what do you do? I was watching TV until six up or five thirty until I called Travis, and then after that, I got a phone call at six. Well, who called you at six? Blaine's boss. Okay. What's his name? Mike. Okay. Mike what? Cornelli. Okay. So at six o'clock, Mike called? Mm-hmm. And then what? Then I still watch TV after that, and then get a phone call at seven from Steven. On what phone? Home phone? Mm-hmm. And continue again. Then he asked me if 
I wanted to come over to Bonfire. And I said, yeah, and then while I was getting ready, the phone rang again. And it was Steven, and he asked me if I, if I was getting ready. Okay. So what happens next? Then I go over there and we start to pick up the yard with the golf cart. So you go over there, do you go in the house at that time? No. Where do you go? I go right back by the bonfire. Is that where Stephen is? Mm hmm And he, when did you decide to go get the golf cart? Well, he had it over there. Oh. Right? Did you hear anything outside at that point? No. Did he tell you anything at that point? Of what he had done already? No. You gotta be honest with us here, Brendan, okay? This is your opportunity to be honest with us. Okay. I look at it this way, we're giving you another opportunity. We didn't need to come back here. And if we sit here and we feel that you're not being honest with you, we can just leave. So you go back by the fire, you said. Is that true or is that not true? We don't want you to tell us anything that's not true. I'd rather not, I'd rather have you not tell us anything than to, to sit here and make things up because it's not going to look good for you. You started to shake your head when, we, when Mark just asked you, is that not true if you went back by the fire? Tell us what what happened. Brent, Brent, look at me. Brent, just look up for a second. It's very important here that you be honest, okay? Tom said well, we can just walk out the door. But you're the one who wanted to talk with us, okay? So let's, let's go back a little bit, okay? What have you lied about so far? Nothing. Okay. So when you go over to the house, do you go inside right away or do you go to the fire? Go to the fire. And what does he tell you? Just that he was going to help. I was going to help him pick up the yard. Did he tell you anything about Teresa at that time? No. All right. We'll continue. Then after we got cleaned up the yard a little bit, and we unloaded the stuff near the fire, and after a while he told me that he wanted to show me something in the house. Did he say what he wanted to show you? No. Okay, so what happens then? And he brings me in the house and so well, why do you go in? The one with the uh, cemented stairs. That would be the side door by the garage? Yeah. Okay. So be, you know, the reason I ask that question is as much detail as you can provide, do so, okay? Go ahead, continue. Then we go into the house and he shows me that she's laying on the bed. So when you go in the house, I'm just going to stop for a second. You go in the house, you go right into the bedroom? Or you turn left. Okay, and then you went into the bedroom? Okay. Yeah. And she was, no, go ahead and finish what you were saying, I'm sorry. And then she was laying on the bed and He told me to have sex with her. Okay, stop there for a second. You said she's laying on the bed. Is she saying anything? To not listen to Stephen. Okay. So there's nothing covering her mouth? And she's saying to you, not, don't listen to Stephen? Yeah. What else does she say? Okay. 
it off your chest. What else does she say, Brennan? We know that part hurts. And it, and it hurts to say it. But these are the types of detail we need to know, Brendan, okay? What does she say? To, uh, don't listen to Stephen and try to go get help or something. Okay. Is she screaming or anything like that? Is she wearing any clothes when she's on the bed? No. How about socks? No. So she's totally naked? Mm-hmm. What is she tied up to? The bed things. Okay, how is she tied up? Explain that to me. What is what what did he use to tie her up? Her hands were tied up with rope and her feet were cut. Describe the role for us. Well, it was just yellow, yellowish. How thick? Do you recall? But you think it was a yellow role? Mm -hmm. Describe the, the cuffs for us. Silver and they were leg cuffs. You're saying they were leg irons? They were designed for her legs. Who's were, who's were those? Stevens, I guess. Just uh, just silver, anything else? Describe again, I know this is hard, we asked you uh, the last time, describe her body for us. Including uh, her private areas. Start with her hair, what color hair did she have? Brown. How long? Marks, tattoos, no, that you recall. No. Did she have acne, pimples, stuff like that? No. Braces? No. Any teeth that were crooked or missing or anything like that? No. Was she bleeding at all? No. Her pubic area? Did she have pubic hair? No. You don't think she had pubic hair? No. In the first interview you said she did, which is right, or don't you remember? something, Brandon, tell us you don't remember. You need to be honest with us here. I don't remember. Okay. Um, did you, do you recall seeing her, her breasts? No. You don't recall seeing them. Did you touch them? No. Did you have sex with her? Yeah. But you didn't touch her breasts? No. 
And we asked just before, what does sex mean to you? Brennan, what does sex mean to you? When a guy and girl Do you know what the body parts are called? Yeah. Okay. Well, explain that to us. What do you, what do, you do when you have sex? The guy sticks his penis into the girl's vagina. Okay. Is that what you did? Yeah. And were you on top of her? Yeah. So she was underneath you. Where were your hands when you were doing this? On the sides of her. Okay. What did she say to you while you're having sex with her? To stop what I was doing. Do you know what it means to ejaculate? Yeah. Did you do that? No. How long did you have sex with her? About two minutes. Why did you stop? Steve at this time? By the door. What was he saying, if anything? He was saying nothing. Okay, when you're done having sex with her, what happens next? He tells me to grab her clothes and he starts unraveling her. He starts on what? Like on the rope in her and that. Oh, okay. And then he ties up her hands and her feet and grabs her. So let's just stop you there for a second. Didn't she try to get away or kick or anything? No. Well, what is she saying during this? Or what's he saying? What's he telling her, Brendan? Come on, Brendan, what's he telling her at this time? We know there's some talking going on, okay? We, we know that. That he said that he was going to take her up to the garage and stab her and shoot her. He actually says that to her? Or does he say that to you, or who's he saying that to? To both of us. And what is she saying when he tells her that? To not do that. Does he have a weapon at this <coughs> time when he's untying her and tying her back up? Well, when he was done roping her, or roped her, he grabbed the gun and then he grabbed her. How did he get her out to the garage? Through the door. No, I mean carrying her or he put her on something or what? Carrying her. Well, how did he carry her? Kind of like, show me how did he carry her. Like this. Did you help carry her? No. You told us last time you did. You told us last time you helped carry her out of the bedroom. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. What's the truth? This one. This one meaning what? 
that he carried her. And what did you take out? Her clothes. What was she wearing? Nothing. What kind of clothes were they? Pants. What kind of pants? Or what color? Or Blue jeans. Okay. And a t-shirt. What color t-shirt? Blue. Are you guessing at that or do you know it was blue? It was blue. Okay. Anything else? Just some shoes. What kind of shoes do you remember? Just that they were black. Where's your underwear? I don't know. You didn't see a bra or panties? Under underpants? No. How did he tie her? What configuration? You know what I mean? Did he tie her hands in the front, back, arms, feet? Tell me how he tied her up. In the front. Tied her hands in the front. Did he tie her feet together? Mm -hmm. Did he tie anything else together? No. You said that he took the, the rifle down? The gun? Yeah. Did you carry the gun out in the garage? No. So you want us to believe that he carried a body and a gun at the same time out in the garage? Yeah. Isn't that nearly impossible to do? Unless you give her the gun and then you carry the body? No. Well, show us then how he did that. Well, he had the gun in his hands and he went under her and she was like right here. Okay. We asked you before about the clothes, okay? You're lying to me when you tell me you don't know where the bra and the panties are. Okay, I can tell that. Where are the bra and the panties? I don't know. They didn't just disappear, Brendan. I didn't see them. So she's alive when you carry her out to the garage? And what time is that about? Eight thirty-five. Why thirty-five? Why do you know it's eight thirty-five? Because we were in the living or the in the bedroom at eight eight fifteen. And how do you know that? Because there's a clock right by the door there. And again, how do you know it was 8.35 when you went out to the garage? Brendan, you want to be honest with us, don't you? Okay. Then just tell us what you know. Be honest. You need to get this off your chest, don't you? Just be honest with us, okay? How do you know it's 8.35 when you go in the garage? Or are you guessing? Or, you know, if that's the case, are you estimating the time? What? Tell me. Guessing? Okay. We're not here to try and put words in your mouth or force you to say anything. Okay? So it's all right if you don't know or, or you're guessing. Say that word. Well, I'm guessing that's what it was or... I believe it was blue, I'm not sure, you know, you know what I mean? Um, because it's real important that it is your words and your memory and, and that you tell us, because this is potentially your last opportunity to do that. And I think Mark's right, it's, it's the, we think we feel you're doing it for the right reasons and that's because you feel it's the right thing to do. But Mark and I also, you know, we'll be talking to your attorney, we have to tell your attorney, Len, that, that we feel like you, you didn't tell us the truth, you did tell us everything, and that's important too. Because you know we have evidence about a lot of this stuff, right? You're aware of that? Yeah. And the evidence will tell us if you're lying or not. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, where's your truck when you go into the garage? But at some point, she's in that truck. We know that. Okay? Bleeding. So you can't say you didn't see the truck or know where the truck was because she had to be in that truck after she was bleeding. Okay? That's just the way it is. And I'm not going to sit here and let you lie to me. You need to be honest here. We just went through that. Mark and I don't want to leave because we feel you deserve this opportunity because you're the one that came forward initially with this information but we're not going to sit here and listen to this now, sometimes you tend you seem to be honest about some parts and then for some reason then you're not totally honest about other parts and it may be because those other parts bother you a lot and we understand that. And that it can be difficult to talk about. But we came out here today, you know, Saturday morning, because we wanted to give you that, that chance, because you said you wanted to talk. We know you were involved in this. There's no question about that. But we're just looking for the detail. So we can, you know, so we match everything up with the evidence and, and so we can believe what you're saying. Do you understand that? Yeah. Brendan, you have the opportunity here to do the right thing for a change, okay? You have the opportunity to do the right thing for her and her family, okay? Why don't you take that opportunity and do the right thing? Okay? You want to do that? You want to do the right thing? Yeah. Okay, then tell us the truth. Start with the truck. That's a good place to start. There's other places we're going, but the truck is a good place to start. Tell us the truth about the truck. It was back into the garage. Okay. Let's start with when you bring her out to the garage. Where do you put her? On the floor. And continue. Tell us what happens. And then he stabs her and they told me to then he puts her into the jeep and then he said he would rather burn her so then he put her back on the floor and then he shot her five times or does he stab her In the chest. Show me where. Like right here. Where do you stab her? In the stomach. What does she say when you stab her? To stop what I was doing. That's that? Is she screaming? Yeah. Is she screaming and saying stop what you're doing? Is she swearing at you? Struggling? What? Tell us how that happened. Just that she was crying a lot. Are you holding her down? No. Who is? Steven is. Okay, Steven goes out and he puts her on the floor in the garage. Where does he get this knife that he stands there with? Truthfully. From the garage. So that this knife is in the garage. Do you remember the drawing you made of that knife? Mm-hmm. Was that an accurate drawing? Or is it different? Very important. It was something like that. What color was it? Black. Black handle. Where's the gun at this time? In the garage. 
we set it somewhere. Where in the garage did you get the knife from? From in the back of the... In the... Dude, he's got like a workshop in the back. Yeah. It was laying on there. So she's laying on the garage and he goes and gets the knife. And then what did he do? He walks back over by her and then stabs her. How does he stab her? Does he get on top of her? What does he do? He kneels down by her. Is she fighting now? A little bit. What's he telling her? Is he telling her anything? No. And he stabs her in the chest. And where you showed Mark and I, that would be where? What's underneath there? What organ is in that area? Any organ in particular? Not that I know. Where's your heart located? Over here. Over there. But he stabbed her right in the middle of the chest? Mm -hmm. Does he hand you the knife then? Or how do you get the knife? He told me to just stab her and... So how do you get the knife? He hands it to me. Is there blood on the knife? Yeah. You told us in another interview that you cut her throat. Did you cut her throat? No. Why did you tell us that? Why did you tell us that? Too nervous. Okay, are you nervous now? A little. Well, what's the truth? Tell me what the truth is. They stabbed her in the stomach. Okay. Brendan, you know people get nervous when they, when they lie. Okay. So you stabbed her in the stomach, is she alive? Stephen stabbed her first. Is she still alive when you stab her? She wasn't moving. Was she talking? Were her eyes open? Anything like that? You know? Did you see her breathing? No. Was there any gurgling going on? Anything like that? No. How deep did the knife go in when Stephen stabbed her? Do you know? No. Were you watching? No. How do you know he stabbed her? Simple question. Because after that, when he told me to stab her, there was a hole in her stomach. In her stomach? There was a chest. Did he tell you where to stab her? No. You just stabbed her in the stomach. How deep did you put the knife in? fingers. About that deep. What did it feel like when you did that? I mean, did you hit anyone when you went into her? No. <laughs> Take my pen and show me what you would, how you did it. Right. And how many times? Once. Did you leave the knife in or did you pull the knife out of the butt? I pulled the knife out. Okay. And then what, what happened to the knife? 
I gave it back to him. And then what happened to the knife? He set it on the floor. Where's the knife now? Oh, you know. Just tell us where the knife is. Honestly, Brandon. What did you guys do with the knife? We put it into the Jeep. What Jeep? Hers. Okay, and then what? And then... After that, he took the gun and shot her five times. Okay, and where did he shoot her? Where in the body? I don't know. Why don't you know? No, was that working? Well, you shot her too. Brendan, did you shoot her? No. You sure? <clears throat> I think you did. I never touched the gun. The first time you told us, uh, ten times, about ten times, that he shot her, and you told us where he shot her, were you lying then or are you lying now? I was lying up, uh, then. Why? Why are there ten shell casings or more on that garage floor? Well, there's gun shells all over the place, though. Were there gun ca shell casings before you took her in there?
he may have did some other things to her. Just tell us. I didn't do that at all. Okay, what else did Steve do? to take her out to the fire. Mm -hmm. Did he use that creeper thing? No. Why did you tell us that? No. Did you help him take her out to the fire? No. When he came back from the fire, he had put her on the fire. Now you come back from the fire, or he does, what do you guys do? You start to clean up the blood. The Jeep's still in that garage? Her Jeep? Yeah, okay. And what do you use to clean up the, the blood? Her clothes. Any, anything else? Bleach. Gas and paint and it. Was there a lot of blood on the floor? In your estimation, was there a lot of blood on the floor? Yeah. Did her, did her clothes get pretty soaked with it? Yeah. No. Those jeans that we took out of your house, were those the jeans you used that night? Yeah. You were wearing? Yeah. And what jacket were you wearing? I didn't have a jacket on. You didn't. What kind of shirt were you wearing? Do you remember? Do you remember what shoes you were wearing? Not really. After 
you clean up the garage, then what do you guys do? We take the clothes and we throw, throw it in the fire. Continue. And then we wait for a little bit, then we throw the rest of the stuff on. What's the rest of the stuff? The van seat and the cabinet. Okay. Then what do you do? We wait for it to go down. What about the Jeep? The RAV4. We, we know certain things happen. But we also don't want you to lie to us or make anything up. What happened to the RAV4? He took it on the pit. Did you go with him? No. Last time you told us you went with him. How did your DNA get in the truck? It ain't. How do you know that? Because I never went in it. So he drives the truck down there himself? I don't think so. Brendan, did you help him take the truck down there? If you did, so what? I did. Where were you when he did that? I was at home. You went home home to your house? Mm -hmm. Who was home? My mom. See, I can't believe that now. I'm sorry. Your mom wasn't home. Your mom was at Scott's. Do you want us to walk out of here? Is that what you want? Then quit lying to us. First version, you say you went down and into the pit with Stephen with the RAV4. You saw some things down there. You told us about those things. Where'd you come up with that? You told us that Steve took the license plates off the vehicle. You told us that Stephen went under the hood of the vehicle. Would you just grab that out of the air? How do you know those things? Just guessing. Your mom's not home. Why did you just lie about that? Well, you didn't. He didn't take the Jeep down right away. When did he take the Jeep down? Well, he told me he was going to take it at night time. You Ten helped him, didn't you? No. Ten o'clock is night time. What do you mean by night time? He said after the fire would go down, he would take it down to the pit. And I said that I was at home. And who was home? Just my mom. Where's Bobby? He was over, he was, he slept over by his friend's house. When Blaine get home? At 11.30. How much blood did you have on you? A little bit. Where was it? On the pants. What about on your hands? What about your hands? A little. Show me again. Grab, take this pen. Like it's a knife. Okay? Show me how you stabbed her and how hard you stabbed her. Right here. I mean, how hard did you do it? Show me. Okay. Now if you 
do that, you know what happens? Blood spurts out, right? So where did the blood go on you? Where did you have blood on you? My pants and my hands. How did you get that blood off your hands? Washed it off. You know I can tell when you're lying to me, Kevin? Your voice changes. I've been doing this job a long time along with Tom, okay? You can't fool us, okay? You can't continue to lie and expect us to believe this. Do you think you're that smart that you can fool us? Brendan? Do you want to talk with us and tell us the truth? Yeah. Okay, then tell us the truth. Where did that knife go? It was in the Jeep. Okay, we'll give you that. It was in the Jeep. What did Stephen say he did, it after, did with it after that? He didn't tell me nothing about it. What, what happened to her underwear? That we know, you know. No, I don't. You do? I didn't see him. The first time we talked to you, the second time you talked about cutting her hair off. Where'd the hair go? Did you cut her hair off? Yeah. Where did that happen? In the, in the bedroom. What'd you cut the hair off with? The knife. The knife you guys found in the garage? Doesn't make sense. That's impossible. You took her out to the garage and that's when you got the knife. Explain how that can be. Did you cut her hair off? No. Then why did you just tell us she did? Brendan. Didn't you ask us to come here and talk to you? Yes or no? Yeah. Why did you ask us to come here? So you could lie to us? So you could tell us the truth? When are you going to start that? What do you think your mom would say if she knew you were sitting here lying to me? okay with that? No. Do you remember what your mom said in court last week? No. Okay, should I refresh your memory? Your mom said that Brendan doesn't lie and that Brendan never lies to police officers. Remember her saying that? Yeah. Okay. So, when I walk out this door right now and I go call your mom and tell her that you've been lying to me, what do you think she's going to say? You think she'll be mad at you? Yeah. Do you want her mad at you? Then why are you lying? You going to tell us the truth now? Simple question. Where's the knife? In the home. In whose house? What do you mean in the beginning? No, I mean where is it now? In the deep. What do you mean in the beginning? You mean where you got the knife from? Where did you get the knife from? 
in the kitchen. Brother, I'm going to tell you what. I've just about had enough and I'm going I'm to leave. I'm going to take Mark with me. Um, and we're going to talk. And if Mark can convince me to come back in, if that's what he even wants, we'll come back in. It can give you a moment to think about it. If we come back in, just telling us the truth. We're going to take you through it if we come back in. You're going to tell us the truth and we're going to ask you some tough questions. And if you changed your story between them, we're going to ask you why. Because that's important. Okay? What he's saying is you got one opportunity left. You understand that? You're going to take that opportunity? Think about it. You've got one more chance to tell the truth or we're done. Got it? Do you want a soda or water or anything? One more opportunity if I can convince him to come back.
Oh.